Jujima, speak to uh, us about hypersurface, for uh, ESP hypersurfaces with one dimensional uh, singularity. So, thank you very much. It's a big pleasure to be here in Mexico, first time of my life being here and meeting lots of singularity people here, especially from Mexico. And uh, of course, there's one singular person who's organizing center of this. This is Pepe. And uh, so, and it's a good occasion to be here at the 60th birthday. Okay, today, so why should I get this? Today I will talk about uh, projective hypersurfaces. And in my earlier work I did uh, local theory of singularities and later on the singularities at infinity. But this is a step into uh, this business. And uh, let's... This should work. So this is an example of a, a real picture of a projective plane, a mapping, a stable mapping of the projective plane into three space, projective three space or real three space. And what you can see is that there are some non-isolated singularities, there are some double lines, or triple points, and you have pinch points at the end. And in the Encyclopedia Britannica, you find this nice picture, and they show you also details of the special points. And in fact, what we are going interested in is using the complex version of this. Uh, complex hypersurfaces with a one-dimensional singular set. Okay. Um, okay, so the talk will consist of uh, several sections. First, I will talk about local singularities, then treat the global case and enter with examples. And it's a good moment to, uh, to, to mention the name of my co-author, Mihaly Tibor. OK, it's so the first step. Uh, what is the homology of a complex hypersurface of the PT? This is not fully answered. It's completely answered in the case if the hypersurface is smooth. Since then you have a smooth orientable surface. You have a kind of duality. And uh, there is a lecture's hyperplane section which tells you about the, the lower half and tells that the lower half of the homology groups are equal to the projective space. And the middle group is free. And you can compute the dimension, the Betty number, by taking this formula, <coughs> by taking this formula over here for the other properties. Okay, so in this case, anyhow, the, the homology is completely known. And the next step is what happens in case of singularities. And uh, then we only have this classical lecture hypothesis. Theory. And this said this, I already mentioned that, so we, we have the homology group up to dimension n minus 1, and uh, above n and, and higher is the task of our work. But uh, it's sufficient to go up to, the, to dimension 2n, since the and the V has the structure of a CW complex of dimension 2n, so they are all also all are zero above. Okay. okay, so about isolated singularities, this is the usual picture. And uh, so there's a picture of the Milner vibration, there's a Milner fiber, boundary of the Milner fiber, uh, uh, kind of vanishing. Uh, of the homology of F into the zero fiber and the Milner fiber is a bouquet of spheres and that's for the moment all we are going to use. In fact, today I will not use Milner monotropy. It is 
which is a nice part of the story. For non isolated singularities, we have the result of Kato and Matsumoto. It tells you that the homology is zero outside this range. So if it's isolated, it's exactly in one dimension. In a one dimensional set, it's spread out of two dimensions, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> uh, then we could look at this picture. This picture shows you it's a picture of a situation with a one dimensional set. Uh, and consists of several branches. Uh, and uh, if you take a point there, you can slice with a transversal hyperplane, and then you get an isolated single layer. Okay, so <coughs> here, following, several in this case. And anyhow, what you can also do is, here's the same picture, you can walk around this piece, which is just in the boundary of the singularity. Uh, that's the, so the sigma can consist of several irreducible pieces in this picture too. Then there is a Milner fiber of the restriction. And this homology is concentrated in only one dimension. So what I get is uh, on sigma i minus the origin, a local system with the homology of the Milner fiber, the transversal Milner fiber. And there is a monogamy operator which uh, maps the Milner fiber homology into itself. And this corresponds to the part delta 2f of the boundary of the Milner. This delta 2f is related to the vanishing zone, and this transversal fiber and the transversal neighborhood uh, is just good connected to the last part of this one. Okay, so in fact we are looking uh, more precisely to the second boundary of f, and uh, to this map ai, which we call vertical monotony. Okay, for a fiber bundle of a circle, you always have the wrong sequence. I don't like this microphone. So, can you understand me? Uh, no. Okay, so then I continue with microphone. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's a very nice sequence. 
Anyhow, what you see, oh, that's perfect. What you see here is the, the delta 2 f at two places. And here you have the homology of the Milner fiber in two dimensions. So the supplementary guide are, are these two things. But there is some extra, some extra fact about this. That since the, there's a duality in this sequence. In fact, the, in fact, this guy is dual to that guy. It's a combination of a variation mapping and a duality. So in a certain sense, the, the first and the last are, uh, are dual, and the two middles are dual, and the two middles, this one, this one, and these two are dual. And moreover, The kernels and the co-kernels, they are here on the right place. So information about AI minus the identity gives you information about the homology in dimension N minus 1 of the Milner guy. Especially if, uh, if this guy is zero. So this means that AI minus the identity uh, is, uh, is determinant uh, Co-kernel should be zero, so that we uh, should have the determinant plus or minus one. Then h n minus one of f is zero. So this is a very important sequence, and uh, and you see that the, the story of, of the vanishing zone is not the only thing. Is if you want to are interested in the Milner fiber itself, you have to do a little bit more. <coughs>
is local in the middle of fiber compared the homology of the small thing with the homology of the single guy. It does not depend on the particular smoothing of the 3D, so it's an invariant of phi itself, which should be studied, I think. And it's also an intermediate step towards the computing of the homology itself of singular hydrogen. Since this relative homology here, this makes the difference between phi zero and phi s. So if you take the long exact sequence, you can try to find the relation between those. What do you mean when you say it does not depend on the particular smooth? So if I can, uh, if I can. Because they are all uh, yeah, on they their own. So yes, they all have the, the same homology. Yeah, they all have the same homology. The, the point is that to draw the two different values. If you take a different smooth things. Yes, yes but the, 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 the space of smooth things is connected. That's the reason for that. Okay, now let's first try to do this for isolated singularities. In this picture, you, uh, the, the, the singular thing has isolated points, it's in black, and then the small thing is the blue guy, and, and in the picture there is an intersection between the small thing uh, and, and, and the zero part. <coughs> since uh, it's the projection on the, not on the delta side, but on the projective side. And, and the points where this happens, these points are exactly the so-called access points for H0 and F0. But in the vanishing homology, we have spread out those. So this is uh, still okay. Then what we're going to do is to use the principle of relativity of the vanishing homology. So in fact, in fact, what we have to do is uh, not to take the green thing, so to say, but around a kind of tubes, tubes around the black thing. But <coughs> apart from the critical points, we have local trivial vibrations. So the blue things can be uh, is homotopy equivalent to the tube around. So what I do is I take this and it cut away everything outside the green things. So in this case, I have that I get the direct sum of this uh, total space modular Milner fibers. And so this is uh, equivalent to the Milner lattice at the corresponding point. So that in dimension n plus 1, this is e to the power in the, uh, in the, in the Milner number of the local and here n is the middle dimension, and uh, since this is the relative homology group, the h n plus 1 is equal to the h n plus 1. Okay, so we have proof now that the vanishing homology of V is concentrated in the dimension n plus 1 and equal to the direction of the middle parentheses. And this is more or less the same statement as a statement of Alex Dinka, so 15, 20 years ago. He has the same kind of, uh, of statement. Uh, oh, the that remark will come next. So this, he has not this statement, but the next statement. If you look to this exact sequence of the pair phi epsilon phi, I filled in the places over here. So here is the, the, that this is a relative group. This is the homology of the smooth uh, hypersurface. So we have this sequence. And in the next step, you have this proposition. That uh, the homology groups of phi for the isolated singularity case and pn, they are the same except in two dimensions. And in the two remaining dimensions, the kernel and the co-kernel of this phi play an important role. And this statement looks exactly the statement of Dimka, only his map phi n is slightly different. So, but, so we don't claim this as being completely new, since uh, the, it's clear what we mean. Problem, of course, is the following. What do we know about phi n? 
And, and in fact, uh, very few, uh, we know about Feynman. Uh, in Dimka's paper, you, you find a lot of assumptions. In fact, the assumption is uh, more or less that, uh, that uh, the, the phi itself is a so-called uh, homology manifold. And that implies that the situation is, is very, uh, is, 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 is very non-general. So in, in my opinion, it's still a lot open to compute the absolute homology for isolated situations. <coughs> okay, now we go to the case of uh, singular set dimension one. And if I look to this picture, uh, it's a plain picture in this case, there is an isolated singularity over here, there is a non-isolated singularity over there, this is perhaps a P1, and there are certain special points uh, where the transversal <coughs> vibration is not the identity, it is, it is, not, it is not locally trivial, and we have again access points, points P, and, and we cannot avoid them in the singular set, so we have to, to use them. But we can still use the principle of uh, vanishing homology and cut the isolated points away and, and keep the non-isolated vanishing zone, so to say, uh, as a result. And so we have now to study this. In this picture also the dimension of, uh, of this guy is not completely the right one. It's about this picture, not for the moment. Okay, now this picture is the picture of the singular set, so the blue thing is the singular set, and one dimension higher, which could have at least, uh, okay, two or more components. There can be a kind of genus part, so there are, they make genus loops, and, they, and you have the access points, on each thing, and you have special points where the local, the transversal vibration is, uh, is not locally trivial. It's perhaps not the vibration. And uh, so we have to, and we take a reference fiber in each of these components. So we have to get this reference fiber, we can move this reference fiber near to all those things, near to this kind of places, where you can walk around this special point. And we consider more or less, uh, the, where possible, we consider the projection of the tubular neighborhood to sigma. But of course, here we have not really projection. And part of the story is that we can split the picture in, uh, for using my theaters later, into uh, pieces which are near to the special points, the access points, and the access points, and the complements. So then we cut out all these green things, and we have the complement Y uh, at the end. So this is the main picture I'm going to use. And uh, what is important is that uh, many of the of the things which were in these local sequences, they are mm -hmm. all visible in the homology of the reference fiber. Since uh, I can, if I want to, to go using the pass, I can go trivial, locally trivial, from the reference fiber to near to a singularity. So this guy is also not only here but also there. Inside this guy was fiber one sequence kernel of A as minus the identity, so walking around, and, and, in, and this was in the six-term sequence, and this contains, at that moment, this group, which was equal to H n minus 1, the free part of the local number fiber. So, and all the actors live more or less in this space. See, it's longer than this. The first step is that uh, the vanishing homology in this one-dimensional case is concentrated in two dimensions only, middle plus one and middle plus two, for the isolated cases, those concentrated 
one dimension only. And I discussed already the embedding uh, of the vanishing homology. Uh, I'm not completely this. I showed that the important things for the vanishing homology are vendors for this. And there's a formula for the Euler characteristic, where you see the Euler characteristic of the punctured minimal surfaces, the transverse of singularity. Transverse of singularity, the Euler characteristic minus one of the, uh, of the non-isolated Milner fibers and the Milner numbers of the isolated singularities which were taken away at the beginning. And there is a formula which I only state here in the irreducible case. It's also a formula for the reducible case, but it's more complicated. That the vanishing homology is so to say the intersection, and, and the intersection is all in the reference space. That's why I told you that all these things they, they happen in the reference space. Uh, uh, and uh, the intersection of all the homologies uh, of uh, special points with the term coming from the genus groups. That's where I talk more about that later. From these statements you already have some corollaries and in this corollary the Betty number should be the vanishing vector. So in this place you should make, make this curly V and also in this place the curly V should be. And what you see is that uh, due to this embedding I get maximum the number of transversal uh, it follows that as soon as there is one local singularity where this h n plus 1 is 0 and this means that the h n minus 2 of the Milner fiber the free, has no torsion as soon as there is only one point then this vanishing vanity number n plus 2 is already 0 so then you have higher concentration so this only one point with this property is enough to kill this vanity normal Okay, the proof works more or less as follows. Uh, in fact, the, the pieces you consider, they are all CW complexes. And you can, uh, uh, Milner fiber, you can see as a CW complex uh, with cells of only two dimensions in this case. Uh, uh, but sigma star, sigma star is one dimensional as a fiber bundle with uh, fibers in only one dimension. So this everywhere comes to two, and from there you can prove uh, with a Maivia Torres argument this concentration. You have to do a little bit more work, but I'm cheating a little bit. But this is the step, and it's a easy step. And by counting points, you can prove the formula for the oil. <coughs> Now we want to, to prove this formula about this uh, H vanishing H n plus 2. So the idea is that you take the same picture and you start, you start here. And you want to, 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 to fill the, the total space above uh, by deformation retraction and filling in. Okay, as soon as you uh, follow passes, there is nothing happens, but if you want to get around the point, then you have to, to, to add some extra loop. And uh, later you have to fill in above in the inside part. So what you can see here <coughs> is that if you take the genus loop, like this, you have, uh, according to the one sequence, uh, uh, to restrict the homology of this reference space to the kernel for every uh, every element of the, for every loop, every genus loop. So you get the intersection of the genus loops of kernel A, J minus identity. 
The same happens if you walk around the cue point. There you have also a bundle of the circle, and this gives you some extra relations. But you get no extra relations for the access points. So since if you walk around access points, then in fact, access points are a little bit artificial to the construction. And if you look to the transversal system, you see nothing. <coughs> and now, what you can see, say already, is that uh, as a consequence, we already have that this n plus two dimensional Betty number, and you take all these kernels, and uh, and you take the min and, and, and anyhow the minimal dimension of this kernel already is about for this Betty number, and this is an even higher. Okay, so this was the situation we had. I made some more space. And now we, the, the last step to do is now to fill in uh, this, uh, this, uh, the, 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 the green pieces, so to say. And the green pieces for the access points, nothing is happening. But for the special points, the red points, there is some effect. We plug in. Look at this guy, and then this gives you some extra relations on the reference space. So then, and then you have to, to set this here, but remark that this guy already was contained in the kernel of the special points. <coughs> so what you see is that we have here, before we had the, this kernel here, this guy was already there, and these kernels are replaced <coughs> by these groups as intersections. So now we have more or less uh, uh, gave, I gave you a suggestion how the proof works. And there are uh, much more detailed details than I tell you. So let's go to the first color. If for each I, and I is related to the number of, uh, uh, it's the numbering of the irreducible components of the single set. There is at least one of the transversal monotonies on the loops with no eigenvalue 1. Then the vanishing homology of, of this guy is 0. And here's an example of that. I take the hypersurface in P3, and if you, yes, this uses, of course, the fact that, uh, that uh, several years ago, many years ago, 20 years ago, I studied this kind of, of isolated line singularities in detail. So for me, it's easy to cook up some examples. Uh, and so, if you look at the simpler set, this is just a P1, the transversal singularity. Uh, you put Z and W as a constant, then you see that the transversal singularity is Morse. Uh, since the degree is 3, you have 3 access points. Then there are 2 special points, and they are of type B infinity. And so we also know the homology of the Milner fiber. It is just a sphere as 2. And we also know that in this case, the transversal monotony <coughs> is minus the identity. So now we have only one point where the, the in two points where the local Milner fiber is concentrated in middle dimension. So it follows from the theorem that the, this uh, this guy uh, is equal to zero, and via counting formula of the order characteristic, I found that the rank of the vanishing. Okay, let's let's look a little bit more at this this formula. Uh, and one corollary of this formula, if there are no special points on sigma, then if the, so then 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 this this term, all these okay, all these terms are zero, 
And if all genus monodromies uh, are the identity, then in fact what I get is that the homology is the homology of the reference space. So this is an example where the HN plus 2 is non-zero. And there are several examples of that. So this situation you can have as soon as you have the easiest way is to have two planes transversely in P3. So you see that all intersection points are the same, no special points. Uh, the P1 is the intersection, no genus loops. So in this case, you have this example. Okay, so the, the last thing you want, of course, of the next thing you want is, is computing this n plus 1 vanishing homology group by itself, and not only in Frank. So, uh, one of the important things is the torsion, and if so, what torsion? And, and the answer is sometimes this is possible, perhaps more than sometimes, but if you go completely through the proof, you are sometimes able to follow the maps and the attention. <laughs> so if you take this guy, over here, again, the singular set is P1 from first to A1, three axis points since it's a cubic, and now I have a single point, only one point, but it's of type G2 infinity, and the middle of it is is a bouquet of spheres, and the transversal monodromy is the identity. So what we get in this case, by the usual tricks now, and the oil of the this, but the next information, which I'm not going to show you here now, is that this is really a free, uh, a free group equal to g to the power 6. Okay, so another special case is the case of surfaces in P3. In fact, most of the, of the cases I treated here in the examples were the surfaces. And then there's some easy way to compute the vanishing homology since the absolute homology is equal to c to the power of the number of connected components. Since on each connected component you have a kind of orientation class. And, uh, and if you take the, take the, the exact sequence of, homology, of absolute vanishing homology, you see that the that this group is just one less than the other. So uh, in this group, the, the, the whole, in this case, lots of things were not necessary. So what you find as a corollary is that uh, r minus 1, r minus 1 is equal to, to, to the bound here. It's smaller equal than the bound. And, and if you think a little bit, then you can uh, play a little bit with this. Okay, if you have only one uh, component of your singular set, which say this uh, transversal middle number one, then you see that r minus one has to be smaller or equal than two. So you cannot have be more than two. And uh, okay, you can play by yourself with this formula, and there are even more precise. Uh, uh, detailed formulas of this type. As the last step, I want to make a step from absolute homology, also in this case, from vanishing to absolute homology. And uh, the first statement we have is that the homology of V and the homology of PN, they are identical uh, outside the range of three numbers. M, N plus 1, N plus 2. <coughs> of course, you this makes a kind of conjecture for S dimensional singular sets, but I'm not making that okay. okay, you just take the long exact sequence of the pair, and you say, okay, the vanishing homology is concentrated only in two dimensions. And then you get this. But in this case, there is not a five-term sequence remaining, but an eight-term sequence. And the eight is too long to write down. 
Well, I guess write down some color values of that. The first color ray I got from the sequence that there is a kind of uh, the, the same bound for the actual homology more or less as we had for the vanishing homology. The difference is only one. And then Bn of phi is smaller or equal than the dimension of the minimal lattice of the smooth sky. And I have no, no good, not, not so many statements about Bn of one of phi. But in case n is even, you can say a little bit more. In case n is even, you find more or less back the formula here the, a little bit like the formulas in the isolated case. Like this, you have the kernel and the co-kernel of the map phi n, the same map phi n, and the hn plus phi is does not depend on this map phi n. It's just modulo of vector c equal to the vanishing homology. So here the vanishing homology on this level and the absolute homology are more or less the same. Contain the same information. And also here there are some cases of special interest. And especially the case where this n plus 2 vanishing homology group is zero. And we had that in several examples. Then if this is zero, then, then you know this, indeed. And then you are exactly, almost exactly in the situation of isolates. And so everything depends on phi n, and in this case I think phi n is even more difficult to determine. So also here, of special interest, are uh, cases that this uh, this guy is zero, and V is a Z-homology manifold. Okay, so this is the final message. Projected the hypersurface with singularities uh, very uh, interesting questions. So just two compute examples and a series of examples. Just look as to manifolds which are like the, the projective planes, the same homology. The questions like this, the positions of singularity influence these homology groups. Well, there's a lot of work to do, but there's a, there's a good thing. You can also contribute if you are over 60. <laughs> Happy birthday.
drink or yeah. 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 Okay. So anyway, thank you, thank you very much. We will continue. Are there maybe another remark or question? So now we have this cocktail of bienvenida. Uh, thank you.